costumes are amazing. I love my costume. The colors, the tones, textures, every detail of it is, um, it's tremendous. We have a wonderful costume designer, Terry Dressback, who also happens to be Ron's wife. You walk into her office where she draws, she glues, she cuts. She's just working like 24 seven, making her world an outlander world where there's like inspiration on the wall and little things that'll inspire her and make her create these outrageously, insanely beautiful costumes. The costume department alone takes up something like a third of an acre. There's one whole room devoted to embroidery. There are mannequins strewn all over the place. Enormous racks of 18th century clothing. Ladies 18th century, men's 18th century. This was in a large, you know, warehouse. My research started 20 years ago when I first read the books. So a lot of what you'll see on screen is what I always saw in my head. The detail and the fabric and the weight and everything about them just says this is what they would have worn during that time. You gather bits and pieces from, from all sorts of places. You know, you do the research, you go to the museums, you see the pictures, you see the little peddler's case, you see the baskets they carry. There's all of these things that end up helping you to create a picture and then out of that picture of what life is like, the answers about clothing come pretty quickly. She is spot on with authenticity and her care of, of how our costumes are made and the cut. We're doing a lot of hand sewing. There's no zippers, there's no Velcro, there's no snaps. The corsets are laced together. Things are made as close as we possibly can to the way they would have been made. Within the period, my skirt does up in two sections. The back does up at the front and the front does up at the back. And under that, we had the precursors to pockets, which are pouches with slits. So I have gaps in my skirt that I then can put my hand in and bring you out an original pocket. <laughs> Claire, she's a chameleon. She's trying to survive. This is a woman who's all about survival. So. We have kept her pretty true to a very clean, working 18th century costume. There's obviously a lot of corseting and the bum roll, which is always really fun. And, and it's just, it was really surprising how much people would wear because it's just layer upon layer. They give her the clothes that exist in that time. And those clothes are one that allow her to survive the elements and the circumstance. As she travels through the story a bit, she gets more things, and we have to kind of constantly sit down and go, oh, where's she getting this dress from? <laughs> and we always laugh that I'm like the best dressed prisoner in the world. We've got four tartans that we've had woven up. We have the basic Outlander tartan, we have the Mackenzie tartan, we have, we sort of call our generic tartan that kind of serves for anybody, and then we've got the Fraser tartan. The Philomor is the, the Gaelic for the large kilt. is very different to the Philobeg, which is the, the smaller kilt that you see more generally these days. It is an extraordinary garment. It's 12 yards of fabric. And what you would do is you would fold it up, lie on it, and then wrap it around your waist, and then you could wear it in various different ways. It was like, uh, almost like a utility belt. Many different uses. You could wrap yourself up in it totally and fall asleep and be very warm, like a sleeping bag. You could use it as a shelter. You could tuck it into your belt and have pockets in it. When you put it on, you just feel sort of in the pot. Her research led us to different colors and different palettes and different fabrics than I think any of us anticipated when we first approached the project. We started taking it apart. And the first place we started was with dyes and colors. What happened was actually as part of our show, the Battle of Culloden uh, is where the, the British Army pretty much wipes out the Highlanders and they went on a rampage and kind of destroyed uh, the Highlander culture and banned the wearing of the kilt and tartans and so on. 
She basically went back to basics in um, finding the colors and the design of them. We went to, okay, where would they get their colors? What plants did they get them from? What was the process of dyeing? How complicated it was? We have a scene in this where women are actually walking wool, and walking wool is the way you set the dye was with urine. Is that hot piss? Yes, Claire. Sets the dye first. The dyes that they used were vegetable dyes, and they were d colors of uh, meant to sort of camouflage people. And the great thing about Terry is she gets kind of excited about the fact that we all put our plaid on in different ways. You know, we all have our own kind of unique style. I personally, I love wearing a kilt. I, I, I love the fact that I get to wear a kilt to work every day. Normally in Scotland, you only really wear them at kind of special so he's got, occasions. He's got the legs for it, though. He's, he needs the, the right legs. Thank you for the compliment. Thank you for noticing. It's OK. Occasionally, the Scots would also not wear their kilt in battle and uh, go naked. And uh, we haven't done those scenes yet, but uh, you never know, it may disappear. Something catch your eye there, lass. You can just step into your costume and it just automatically kind of clicks in and you feel, you feel like that person. And you know, the level of detail in every single costume is just exquisite. I have a responsibility to make sure that people can feel like they watch this and they're in the world and in the story we're trying to tell. And I think we're doing a damn fine job of that.